Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about debt consolidation and some strategies that I plan to put in place. And so if you're interested, just keep watching. Okay, so I think it's important for me to probably set the foundation of what I have been doing for a debt consolidation and about mid-year last year or maybe it was closer to it might be closer to like March of last year I decided that I wanted to consolidate our debt our debt consisted of some high interest credit cards some loans that had collateral attached to them and let me think yeah we had several accounts that we were paying like our storage and our trailer and our tractor so there was just a combination of debt there that I wanted to consolidate my main plan was to do this in phases phase one phase two phase three and so my main priority was consolidating the debt that had collateral attached to them so like our trailer our storage our tractor I wanted all of those to not have any liens on them so I consolidated all of those first. So that was phase one. Phase one consisted of trying to get those in one place. Now, what's important when you think about doing debt consolidation is to see if you're going to reap the benefit. Now, if you have a loan that's a zero interest that you're just going to pay out or can pay more towards, if you can't pay more towards it, then save it in a savings account and then pay it in full. Sometimes loans you can't pay more on, like our car loan. I can't pay more on our car loan because all it does is make my payment smaller. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny because I tried to pay like $50 extra and then it said my next payment was $50 less. And so, you know, there's, there's just some loans that you have to pay in full. And so you just have to do the math in terms of like our storage if i paid it the way we were paying it i was going to pay an x amount of dollars whereas if i just paid it in full i actually was given a credit for paying it in full which ended up being less than the amount i thought i was going to have to pay to pay it in full and then with the debt consolidation i did pay the five percent transfer fee to transfer it to the debt consolidation phase one. But that was all I was gonna pay was a 5%. Now I'm just paying it out. The term is short. The term is very short, which is why at the beginning of 2024, I was like, wow, where did that year go? But then I was like, yay, because I'm, half, I'm more than halfway there. So I think it's just important to do the math, what's gonna, save you the most money if you pay something in full is that going to give you a benefit like anything you pay in full they're going to take the interest off obviously they're going to prorate it and then so what you see on your statement may not be what you have to pay to pay it in full that's why it's important to call them don't try to figure that out on your own call them and say if i pay this in full today or within the next 10 days how much is it going to be so that was the foundation of how I started our debt consolidation. Now, like I said, that was phase one. Within the next six months, I started phase two. And phase two contained a lot of the little credit cards, like the little credit cards that I was paying interest on. Here's what concerned me with those that I went ahead and did a phase two was that the interest rate was going bananas and if you had a card that had a variable rate 
your rate was going to be all over the place. And although I feel like most of ours were fixed rates, I just didn't want to have to deal with that. I did have a credit card change our rate for no reason. I mean, I didn't know. One one day it was 8.9, the next it was 11.9, and I just don't I don't like that. I like stability. I like I don't like change. <laughs> I don't like things to change, especially not when it comes to my money. So that was phase two. And then after a couple of months, I got another offer to do a debt consolidation at a lower transfer fee with another credit card. And I had two things left that I went ahead and consolidated into one. So I have three phases going on right now. Thank you, Jesus, that phase one has been paid in full. So now we're just working on phase two and phase three. I do have one thing that is interest-free. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to let those live it out. So it's important to look at your balance with those 0% interest and make sure that the payments you're making are going to have that beautiful collision where it's going to be paid in full and the offer is going to be the promotional offer is going to be over now a lot of times the credit cards say you know you have zero interest for six months and, and then they offer you a minimum payment of like less than that and if you pay the minimum payment for six months you're not going to pay it in full so you got to make sure that you're paying that you take your amount, you divide it by six. So let's say you owe $600, they gave you six months, pay $100 every month, and by the six month, when your zero interest is over, you'll have paid it in full. That's just kind of a, a small example of how to do that. So during my debt consolidation, we did have hurdles that we ran into and it's just going to happen. Those things are going to happen. We had a death in the family. I had a job reclassification that changed how much I was getting paid and when. We had a payment on one of our credit cards that was appropriately applied, but not the way I thought it was going to be applied. The whole point of the debt consolidation was to pay less interest and to get out of debt as fast as possible. We are, we have six more months before we hit that point. And I am so excited, yet I still feel like I need to implement some strategies to get us there. So the strategy that I have that is gonna just kill me inside is <laughs> a no buy quarter. So for the first quarter of this year, I'm not gonna buy anything. Now, last year we sure treated ourselves very well. Like my husband bought another trailer. I bought, he bought me my Louis Vuitton bag. And so, I mean, we have had our flowers per se. We've given ourselves gifts that weren't necessary or needed, but it's kind of nice when you get to the end of the year and you're working hard and you just want something to show for that. And I know that's one of the don'ts. Don't reward yourself. Well, I think that it's okay to reward yourself. And I think that if that's what you want to do, it's your money. Do whatever you want with your money and don't let anybody tell you what to do with your money. But for me, I just feel like I get very influenced. And coming from somebody who shows you all items that perhaps influence you to buy, I also get influenced by other influencers or maybe you have a YouTube channel that I watch and I get influenced by you. And so that that's one of the things that I feel like I need to work on this year is to not impulse or reward by or at least for the next three months. 
And so it, get, it gets difficult because I watch videos and I get influenced or I get an email or, you know, all the emails that I signed up to get discounts with the with Veronica Beard, with Nordstrom. I mean, Nordstrom, they text me, they email me. I mean, it's relentless and I just have to stay strong. I just have to stay strong for the next three months. And a lot of times you can just unsubscribe from those or or just not listen to influencers and kind of live vicariously through another person and just be happy for them to say wow that's a nice bag i'm glad you got it da, 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 da. which you know it it's nice to to be happy for others and then just build wish list and say for and and say oh i really like what that person got i really want to try to get it but i can't afford it so i'm going to set aside 50 dollars every month and then maybe in a couple of months or, or six months, I can buy it. And, and maybe by then you might change your mind. I mean, I honestly believe in the 24 hour rule. If you feel like you're in an impulse, buy something, put it in your cart and wait 24 hours. And if you still want it after 24 hours, then buy it. But if you kind of, I always talk myself, if you could have seen all the carts I had stuff in <laughs> you probably think like what is she thinking but yeah i think it's kind of nice and i like to i like to play shop i mean i like to shop i like to get on websites and look through all the sales put stuff in my car and then i close it and i'm done and it's kind of like i don't know it kind of satisfies me and and knowing that i shopped and <laughs> but i didn't buy anything i didn't do the final step but I don't know. I mean, if you're influenced that way, like I am, then those are the strategies that I would do. Either live vicariously through the other person, save to get the item that you want, be happy for them, but don't feel like you have to have that as well. And just unsubscribe from emails or text messages and because some of the retail stores they're relentless i mean they will text you send you emails alerts notifications this is why they want you to do all that so that when a sale comes up they want to influence you to go on there and so just be strong and and don't do that and i'm talking really to myself <laughs> to be strong and not do that so i'm hoping that we with me having a no buy that will have some residual funds that I can apply towards the phase two and three and kind of be done with it sooner than we're planning for it to be. But the next three months is going to be very critical, very critical for us for sure. One of the other things that we started doing here in our home, we started doing like our own nails. We started doing our own hair. I know I cut my own hair when I just need a trim. And after I've messed it up sufficiently, then I try to go to the hairdresser. <laughs> but I mean, I do my own nails. I do my own toes. So I do my own manicure, pedicure. I give my husband a pedicure. I give Mocha a pedicure. And so, I mean, you just adjust your life. And we've done that since the beginning of this debt consolidation. In fact, my husband said, we're getting closer to where we can go get our nails did again. And I said, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're getting there. Not quite there yet, but we're, we're getting there. And so just those little things. And you know, I say this also saying that, yeah, we bought expensive items last year. But it's a give and take, y'all. If you can give up the small things, then you can afford the big things. And this is not a big deal to me. Me doing my nails is not a big deal to me. I don't mind doing my husband's nails, cutting his nails. Um, I don't mind cutting my hair and, you know, doing grooming on mocha. I don't mind doing all that. And so it's not it's not anything that i'm taking on that i'm not okay with if that makes any sense if you're not okay with that well then don't give it up i mean don't give up the things that you really enjoy and love if they're minimal so instead of getting your nails done every week maybe you can go every two weeks or once a month or something like that we just decided to take it off the table altogether the other thing is utility use like we try really hard 
to not have our heater on or our air conditioning on. We try to keep low use of those items. We put on a jacket, we put on our socks. And so I think just for right now, it's some it's a small sacrifice. And so I know in November when it got a little bit cool, everybody was saying that their electric bill was like $800, $800. I was like, wow, $800. And I was so thankful that ours was 170. Like we really have tried to not use our central heat and air. We'll use floor heaters in the room that we're in, or we'll turn them on for a certain amount of time. Like I have, the central heat set right now at 60 and so when it gets below 60 then it'll kick on but if it doesn't then it won't and it's really funny because where our house sits it, it stays fairly warm so even though it feels cool in here it says that the house is like 65 or something like that just enough for it to not come on and so I just use a cover I put on a jacket you know and so it's not a big deal now I think I said this before and I wouldn't try to ut utilize that strategy if you have small kids because kids do need to be in a warm environment. It's just my husband and I, and so it's mainly me Monday through Friday because I work from home. And so I'm mainly the one here all the time and I have like this little heater on in my office and I just use it to, I'm in here most of the day. And then when I go out, I sit in my recliner and it has like a little back heater and I just turn that on. So, I mean, it's made a difference. I know a lot of people say, well, floor heaters and other, you're still using electricity, but it's different from the central heat and air because the watts that go into sustaining that airflow versus a little floor heater, it's very different. So, I don't know. I've seen the difference and that's just what we do. So the next strategy is no girl math or logic <laughs> for the next three months. Even if I return something, I can't buy something else because girl math tells me, well, I'm not spending any more money because I returned this or that. No, there's not going to be no girl logic or girl math, at least for the next three months. Like I'm committing to January, February, March of just being really, really good at not self-serving myself and applying everything and anything I can to being done with this debt consolidation and so I don't think three months is a long time and I know that Valentine's Day is in February but we're just gonna have to make do I mean we still have allowed ourselves our monthly allowance on our Apple card a very healthy allowance if you ask me and we should be able to make it through with that. And so the next thing is just focus on the goal at hand. Celebrate the small wins. Like I said, we're done with phase one. Thank you, Jesus. Like phase one is done, paid in full. We have phase two and phase three that will come to an end in six months. I can do this. We can do this. And so I'm just... I'm just praying that we can stay disciplined. That's the main thing for me is self-discipline, self-control. That's at the forefront of what I'm praying for for the next three months because I can plan this out all I want, but it's what God wants for us. And so I see this from a very Christian perspective, and you may not, but I definitely do because I feel like anything can happen in the next three months. And so I have to make sure that I'm focusing on the goal at hand through my Christian beliefs. The next strategy that we're going to implement is no travel plans. Like we, we are not going to travel for the next three months. And we didn't travel for New Year's or Christmas. Usually we try to go at least to Dallas or something that's like five hours away. But this time we didn't do any of that. We 
want to go to Trader Joe's at some point and we may do that on a weekend, but we plan to come and go. We don't plan to stay. We don't want to incur any hotel debt. We don't want to incur any other debt other than what we're going to go do, gas and groceries. And like I said, our monthly allowance to ourselves allows us to do that. But we just have to see where we're at at the end of the month because that's for the whole month. And so if we spend it all within the first two weeks, then, <laughs> then that's when we are in danger of going over our budget. So we have to make sure that we strategize the right time and the funds. And so those two things are going to be big factors, but we're not going to travel anywhere where we're going to have to stay have to pay for a stay. No, none of that, not for the next three months. The next strategy is eating at home. And we've done that also from the beginning of our journey. That was another thing that we implemented was we eat at home Monday through Friday. And then with our monthly budget, we try to eat out. We still get Cokes from Sonic. That has just been a, a reoccurring aggravation that comes up and I, and I I'm just as to blame I mean I like my sonic cokes every day and so you know we just kind of if we can if they're within our budget we get them if we're getting close to the end of our budget then we just drink cokes here at home I mean it's not a big deal and then the last strategy that we implemented and if you're at the beginning of your journey to do a debt consolidation we cleared out a lot of things we weren't using. We sold a lot of items that we weren't using. We applied all of that to pay off some of the small debt before we did the debt consolidation. We paid off what we could. And then what we had left, we kind of split between our two pay periods. So we both get paid twice a month. And so I try to make them as even as possible. And if you're not able to do that, like if you get paid mid-month and the end of the month and you have something that falls like right in the middle and you have to pay it before this time, but you can't pay it on the 30th because it's due before then, then pay it twice in one month and then that'll kind of get you ahead. So just to kind of clarify that, let's say you get paid on the 15th and the 30th. You have a bill due on the 17th. You normally pay it on the 15th, but you, you have a heavy debt load on the 15th and you would really like to move it to the 30th. So go ahead and pay it on the 15th. And then when the 30th comes around, pay it again. And then it'll be paid for the next month. So hopefully that makes sense. So you kind of pay one payment ahead. And then when it comes around again, you'll have successfully moved it to the second pay period instead of the first. So within our budget, there's a lot of controlled aspects, but the one thing that is out of my control is the central heat and air, our utilities. I can't control for the weather. So I don't know when it's gonna be hot or cold. Sometimes we might have to turn up the heaters or, or those are just things that, there's just going to be things that you don't have any control over, but you have control over of how you spend your money. If you go out of town, if you have to put gas, like gas is up and down. Like some days it's good. Some days it's bad. We've gotten into the habit of the first week of the month, we fill up our cars and then we just use them throughout the month when we have to. We're blessed in the fact that we don't have to use a car for work. I work from home. Although there are times that I have to go into the office, predominantly I'm at home. So I probably go into the office maybe one time a quarter. My husband has a work truck that they pay for the gas for that. So really, we don't have to pay for gas daily, which is, like I said, a major blessing. And so we fill up our cars and typically it lasts us throughout the month. Now, towards the end of the month, we might need to get more gas. It just depends on what's happening in life too. We try to go to get our groceries and we have to go an hour away. So we have to, we fill up with gas, get our groceries. And then we try not to go out of town anymore. We live in a small town. So yeah, we use gas 
locally, but nothing's really far. I mean, everything's really, really close. And so we try really hard not to go anywhere or use our vehicles for right now. And I know it's kind of hard for maybe our families to understand. I mean, I know it might be hard for our families to understand why we don't go visit as often as we do or we just go like once a month whereas before we used to try to go every weekend and it just with gas being so crazy expensive it's just hard it's hard to not only pay for gas to go there but buy whatever we need while we're there to drink and eat and if we go to the movies or, you know, it's just, it's it's a big expense that I think before we kind of took for granted and we wondered where all our money was going. Well, you know, those trips cost a lot of money, even though they're an hour away, they still take a lot of money for us to do them every weekend. And so we really stopped doing that and we try to go when we can or when there's an, an occasion, but when there's a necessity, but for the most part, we're just trying to lay low until we get through this debt consolidation. And, and we're very close and I'm very thankful again to God for allowing us this, this opportunity for blessing us with our jobs and our home. And I'll tell you what, guys, once this debt is paid off, I don't want to get into anything anymore. Like I would love to have a new car, but I am not going to do that. My car is practically brand new and we have a beautiful home that God blessed us with and our jobs are amazing they're not perfect but they're amazing and we, we like our jobs um, the other strategy that I meant to mention was you know if you have the potential to get over time to do it I know a lot of times we're tired we want to come home we don't want to have to work extra hours but I think if there's an opportunity to work and get and earn more money to pay towards your debt or just to just to enjoy just for yourself just to enjoy eating out or whatever you want to do with it it's extra money do whatever you want with it whether you want to apply it to the debt or if you just want it to live on I think that that's really really important to to do that that if you have the opportunity to do that that that's nice I don't have that opportunity available to me but I try to do YouTube and I try to do my Amazon associates program and try to earn a little bit of money to spend like on gas or eating out or whatever so I appreciate your support to you being here and you watching this video and hopefully we're helping each other <laughs> You help me by watching and I help you by give, giving you strategies. But anyway, that is the end of the video, y'all. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.